Hi, it's Dave from Drive Adventure. Welcome back to the channel. If you haven't done so already, please think about subscribing and putting the notification bell on. Today, I am reviewing my daily driver, the immense and incredible E63S. Welcome inside the cabin of my E63S. This is my daily driver. This is the family car <laughs> and it's no slouch. The reason I got this car was because having had the GT3 or having gotten into Porsche cars, I just found the diesel estate whilst it had all the practicality and it had all of the sort of capacity you could want it lacked the F factor and the P factor, the fun and the performance. So in addition to its practicality and its performance, it's adjustable. So with, you know, a click of a button, you can be DEFCOM 3 or you can dial it right down and you can just be a comfortable, relatively comfortable, cruiser and that's what I like about this car it's, it's just a total package and I guess the only thing I could say about it that's maybe slightly negative is that it really does drink petrol um, so we don't need, don't live near a Costco <laughs> where you can get petrol quite cheap then it's probably I don't know it's gonna cost you a lot of money to run it every year uh, the petrol this car will do about 350 miles if you don't put it on any runs if you get on the motorway and cruise a bit which is what I do do I do use this for cruising um, up and down the M6 into Cumbria places of parts of Cumbria and so back to Cheshire and that then you know your economy does pick up a little bit and you'll get 450 pushing maybe even 500 miles on a tank so from that point of view it's not that bad when we did the trip to Scotland with the family um, you know I got all the way to Fort William on a full tank, filled up again, all the way up onto Isle of Skye, filled up, did all my driving round on Isle of Harris and Lewis, and then, you know, I, don't, I think I had to fill up once when I was on there. So it's economy is good if you get it on a bit of a run, but if you're pressing on and you're using really spirited driving, you get the paddles on, get, fight, get dialed in, <laughs> then it will drink, it will drink the petrol relatively quickly. What do you expect for a V8 twin turbo engine? You know, that's what you're going to get. So on a crisp winter's day, it's safe. It's got four wheel drive. I'm running the winter rubber. So at uh, minus 0.5 degrees, you know, you're relatively, you're really relatively safe and secure. And what I love about this car as well is that other cars I could have considered, obviously RS6 is, probably the one that stands out as the practical family cruiser with ballistic performance. The reason I didn't go for that car uh, was because what I like about the Mercedes is it is bigger, it's got more capacity, it is more practical, but in addition to that, it's also a bit more understated. Yeah, it will depreciate. This car will nose dive, will collapse in value early on like a skydiver. So you've got to haggle as much as you can at the beginning. But the way I look at it is the last E-Class had that 2012 till 2019, so that's seven years. This car, I will have it for a while. I'm not someone who swaps and changes every five minutes. I'm expected to do so. So this car will be the family car with the excitement and thrill factor. We'll have this car, I would say now, for a similar period of time. And I've actually been reading Car Magazine and the next AMG engine we're being led to believe is going to be a four-cylinder with an electric motor. It might be quicker than a V8 twin turbo, but goodness, it won't sound anything, will it? So I think I could have a car, which again, as we move nearer to the elimination of the petrol engine, as electrification takes over, it's already eating into the thinking of all the design engineers as we speak, but a four-cylinder engine in this with an with a electric motor on, I mean, it won't, 
it won't sound like this, will it? So let's talk through the E-Class AMG 63S. It has been covered by other YouTubers about the exhaust pipes. These are just for cosmetic effects, so they don't actually attach to the actual pipes. The pipes of the actual exhaust sit behind there. These are just here for, for, for effects. It's got the LED rear lights and nice big AMG badge, E63. S. They don't make the non-S version anymore. It actually looks mean, <laughs> but it's dirty, I think. But uh, yeah, 20 inch rims. It's got 295 section rear tyres, so they're nice and wide, plenty of grip. We're running the Michelin Alpine tyre for this time of year, so loads of grip for these conditions. Love this little detail on the car, V8 bi-turbo 4-matic plus. So you can actually turn it off the four-wheel drive system, but I've never done it. I don't forget to ever do race start. You don't need it, this car's got so much juice. The black wheels, the cross spoke wheels, very reminiscent, very similar to the um, the wheel that's on the YSAC pack of the RS. But um, you know, I like the wheels and then you've got that nice uh, steel rim. Obviously it could be a little bit cleaner. Front of the car, this is where they've just updated the latest E-Class Estate. So you get a different front grille, um, looks a bit more mean. Again, I like it. It's a bit more understated, this one. I, I quite like it. You know, you get your big three-pointed star and uh, LED light system. I actually like these two kind of waves that come through the front lenses. It's got a lower front uh, splitter, a bit more, bit more aggressive. Now, when I first saw this car in the showroom, I thought, has this car got sent a lot of wheels? Because it looks like it, it does have. But this is just a cap, and there's an adapter that you get with the car, and the adapter goes on there, and that just screws off, and then you've got the bolts behind. Very few people will spec ceramic brakes on this car. Um, this is just a regular steels. Looking a little bit worn now for 20,000 miles, but uh, more than enough stuff and power. These brakes are massive. One of the cool things about the keyless entry is you've got the key and that's in your pocket. Now if you walk up to the car and just touch the, touch the, just opens and away you go. And similarly if you're coming away from the car and you want to lock it, just touch it and away you go. Okay, so let's talk about the steering wheel in this comfortable cruiser. So on the steering wheel we have on the left you've got the volume trackpad function there with your thumb or your fingers rolling across that and then on this side how you control the menu in front of you on the main readout you can flick between menus such so your tire pressure and you've got uh, economy how many miles to go before you need more more juice and um, navigation rev counter etc etc g meter <laughs> And then you've got your cruise control. This car's got adaptive cruise control. I've, I've really never used it, but it, it, when I have used it, it's okay. But it's a bit weird when you come up against a, up to a car and it starts slowing you off. And you know, I don't, I don't tend to use it very much. And you've got some buttons over here that um, help you with that um, driving cruise control. It's called the driver assistance pack. On the doors, we've got, uh, this is a really neat feature and I think other manufacturers could learn a lot from this. So I can push the L1 there and I can operate the passenger seat or I can just operate my seat. So we've got the heated option. And then I like this from Mercedes, you know, you've got your seat, you know, as you'd expect to see it, side profile, headrest, backrest, front support. This bit's nice to get the lumbar support on your legs. And then you've got three options for memory. I do like the black. This is, this is a nice, the black ash trim. And then you've got your buttons on here for things like your um, climate control temperature, demisting, and then and, and that. I do like the IWC clock. You don't get a second hand ticking. I'd like to see that, I think, but uh, IWC clock in, in a Mercedes. This is like the storage cubby hole. 
in here you've got um, the cable. This doesn't doesn't have uh, Apple Play, which is wireless. You've got to plug it in. It does have a pad in there. So in here you've got a pad, and you can put your phone in, and it'll do wireless charging on this pad. That's that. Little cubby hole here to put your change in. And the, this is you know this is where all you kind of control it all with your left hand. So it's like a trackpad. So you know on on the readout you've got um, you know you can go to your menu option and then you click it and just just navigate through on your Apple CarPlay, which is what most people do. On the right hand side you've got your volume button, which is also appears on the steering wheel too. Sports exhaust button, auto stop stop button. But I'm always in sport mode when it, it doesn't work in sport. But anyway, surround camera, parking sensor, home button on the trackpad. To the left you've got your dynamic drive selector so you can have like you say individual where I have it in sports sports exhaust sports suspension this button here will give you a manual transmission so you're just on the paddles the paddles are just behind the steering wheel so it's a bit GT3-esque <laughs> when you want it to be and when I'm pressing and having some fun I do use the paddles I'll be honest and then the one below that you've got your manual suspension override so you've got comfort sport and if you push it again you get sport plus and then you've got your stability control package. Four wheel drive is standard, but you can turn it off and go just two wheel drive, drift mode and all the rest of it. In here, it's got a lot of storage, you know, so you get all your, your wallet, your glasses cases in there, some cables, chewing gum, a key case, so that's it. In the back of here, you do have some more ports for the ports for the passengers, so they can plug in the devices. Glove compartment, it's reasonable size, quite a bit of junk in there. Thought it's love to use this when we go to McDonald's, get some ice cream or some drinks. So just sit, that sits in there, but you can take it out. Actually, if you put that in there, I can't fit my phone in. It won't fit into the wireless charging area, so that's why I take it out. I love the pan panoramic glass sunroof. Again, that's standard now. This is a neat, neat feature here, just in here. I don't, I don't keep them in here, but you can keep your sunglasses in there. So there we go. I like the steering wheel, I like the 12 o'clock marker. This, they've now got an even more updated version of this car. It's got a different front grille. It's got the same power, the same engine. They've updated the comfort suspension a little bit. You get an even better steering wheel. You get an updated uh, Mercedes-Benz X. I think it's an X system or M MBUX system. When you're Apple CarPlay, you don't, you're not using the standard system, and this is more than enough for me. So one of the cool things about this car is uh, the way you can have the car set up in terms of its uh, colour scheme. So. If we, if we go down to the light setting here, you can actually have the light strip which runs through the centre console here and down the strips of the doors here. You can actually change which colour you want. So you've got ocean blue, purple sky, red moon, fire red, and just in jungle green. <laughs> so if I was a passenger in this car, that's where my seat is normally positioned. That's how far back I have it. So, you know, there's room in here, it's comfortable. You've got your handrails to hold on for dear life. <laughs> and uh, if I'm driving, maybe. And then, you know, you pull the centre armrest down. You know, it's a nice, comfortable cabin to be in. And you've got uh, some of the function, a bit of storage capacity in here. And these are your drinks holders. These are quite neat. These are quite strong and robust. You get a bit of gear in there. And then the pockets down the side for all your, all your bits and your bobs. Whenever I come out in this car, my kids have been in it. There's always something left behind and I'm amazed. Not left anything behind it. Again, I said it before, but the capacity of this car, you know, it's, it's incredible. There's so much room, you know, you get all your gear in it. If I'm moving my tyres around, you can take this thing off. It's all adjustable. This thing here you can have as, a, a, as an option, and this helps with the stuff moving around in the boot. So if you want to increase your capacity, you just click this little button here. Pull it forward, the seats go down, and you know, you can fit a lot of stuff in this car. It's just, it looks, it just looks great. It just looks great. Its ride quality could be a little bit better than some cars I've driven recently, but as a family cruiser, as a car that does everything, as a daily car, and I do use this car an awful lot, 20, 20 and a half thousand miles in, what, 18 months, so I do use this car. Apart from its economy, it's just, just full package, just does everything. So it is the 
again is the apex model it is the it is the model in the range the amg it's it's the it's the one i kind of always wanted really i'd always wanted to go for an amg and i would ordered one maybe 18 months before uh, put a deposit down and then I, I pulled out and in the time between when i pulled out on the on the, on the, on the order and then i came back to, back to thinking about doing it and going for it again what mercedes had done very very fortunately for me was that they'd actually stepped up the base specification quite significantly so the specification had been stepped up a lot the deal was right i had considered the panamera st but i looked at it and i thought it was more money and if I wanted to get the Panamera Turbo, it was significantly more money. And because I've been used to a car, even though the kids haven't got prams now and all the rest of it, the thing about an estate is once you get an estate and you've had an estate car and you've had practicality and you've learned to live with that practicality, then not having the practicality as much in the Sport Turismo line I don't know, it just wouldn't have been as much. So I'd have got less less capacity in terms of storage and things like that. And at the same time, the performance, because I, I couldn't really afford the turbo version, this kind of slotted into my thinking again, because it's like, well, I've got like dynamite performance, 0 to 63.4 seconds. And then I've got all the room I need and I'm been custom, you know, been custom practicing our family life to have the room, the space to, to do, do the stuff and the trips. So, just came right back into focus and it was like yeah this is this is the car and the other consideration was I'm not I'm not into SUVs we are going to feature uh, a nice Porsche SUV on the channel in the not too distant future don't know when that will come out when we'll do that but the Macan GTS I mean that again it's a super practical car but I'm not into SUVs. I just haven't ever got over the line with my thinking about having one. And they look good, and they perform well, and they've got a bit of space, and you know they're comfortable. But I've just never managed to get over the line. And it's interesting. The Macan is the best-selling model for Porsche Santa Candle, and lots of dealers. It's a big seller. So this is a car that puts a smile on your face when you drive it because it's got the fun factor, it's got the performance factor and I think it looks really good. I think it looks stealthy in black, it looks understated, if it wasn't for the AMG stickers everywhere it could almost pass off, it's just a sport line E-Class Estate but it's got that wider front track over the standard E-Class. The rear track is the same same width, same dimensions. This runs 295 section tyres, so that's like Boxster Spider width. They are These are wide tyres at the back. The front, it runs 265 tyres. So I had 265 rear tyres on my M3, so it kind of puts it into perspective. The car has great handling it handles really well the ride quality i think is a bit it's a bit harder and it's stiffer than the recent porsches i've driven so the taycan and the turismo 4s i think they have it in terms of ride quality but the thing about this car is when you're driving it fast and you put pushing on a bit that's where the suspension and the firmness is your friend So you've got 3.4 seconds to 60, 612 horsepower, 850 newton meters of torque. Diesels, which are known for their torquiness, they're normally running around 600. This torque comes in low, it's like 1500 revs, and it's right with you to near the top of the rev band. So this thing just takes off, and it's just no nonsense. It's just an opportunity presents itself, safe, clear, overtaking opportunity. And again, that's another thing that I love about this car is that it gives you confidence when you need that performance to complete a manoeuvre. A big smile on your face.
thanks very much for watching today's video i hope you have enjoyed it please think about subscribing and getting the notification button on next time i do a video you'll know all about it and i'll see you next time